pastor made a profound statement. He said, the problem of mankind began in a garden. The garden of Eden. Amen? And the solution also began in a garden. The garden of Gethsemane. The problem of man began on a tree. The tree of the knowledge of good and evil. And also all the problems of man were solved on a tree. The cross of Calvary. Cross is the biggest regret of Satan. The biggest regret that Satan has is the cross. You know the Bible said for if the princes of darkness knew they would not have crucified the Lord of glory. You know they came to arrest Jesus and Jesus had been with them for three and a half years doing ministry and they couldn't kill him. They did everything to kill him. They could not kill him. But finally Judas betrayed him. Amen. And they came to take him. But let's see what happened. Verse 4. Can we read it together? Jesus therefore, knowing all things that should come upon him, went forth and said unto them, Whom what? Whom seek ye? Who are you looking for? Verse 5. They answered him, Jesus of Nazareth. Jesus said unto them, I am he. And Judas also quit betrayed him, stood with them. Verse 6. As soon then as he had said unto them, I am he. They went backward and what? And fell to the ground. 600 soldiers, including Judas, 601. All of them went under the power. Hallelujah. Because Jesus was not captured. He was not taken by force. He said, I have power to lay down my life. I also have power to take it up. Amen. Finally, he lifted the power from them. You know, and they got up and he asked them the question again. Verse 7. Can we read it together? Then asked he them again, Whom seek he? And they said, Jesus of Nazareth. Verse 8. He gives them the condition and gives Satan the condition. It's only on this condition I will, I will submit myself to be arrested. Only on this condition that I will submit myself to be killed. Can I hear an amen? amen? So let's find the condition. Can we do it together? Jesus answered, I have told you that I am he. If therefore you seek me, let Peter go his way. Let John go his way. Let James go his way. Let PCJ go his way. Can I hear an amen? amen. And you can put your name there. Let who go her way. Let who go his way. Anytime you see a scud like this one, praise God, it has sharp bones. Very sharp bones. Very sharp metals. And they tied him to that thing. He was holding it. And they started flogging him. They will flog him. Those sharp bones and metals will pierce into his body. And they will yank it out. And flesh will be jumping everywhere. They will flog him a second time. It will pierce into his body. They will yank it out. And flesh will be scattering everywhere. One place he was writing in Psalm 129 verse 3. He said the plowers have plowed on my back. They have made ridges on my back. By the time they finished with the back of Jesus. It was looking like a tractor walked on his back. It brought a crown of thorns. If you see the thickness of those thorns, very thick like my finger, and they placed it on the head of Jesus Christ after they had finished flogging him. And they used their button and started pressing the thorns into his head, pressing it into his core. When they felt he was not entering well, then they carried it with the button and they smashed it on his head. And those things pierced into his core. Shattered his core completely. What was he paying for? Is the flogging not enough? So you read 2 Corinthians chapter 8 and verse 9. For we know the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ. 
For though he was what? He was rich. Yet, for my sake, he became poor. That I, through his poverty, might become rich. Can I hear an amen? So he took our place in poverty so that we can take his place where? In wealth and in riches. Very good example is a football match. You know, as you watch a football match, they are playing. Sometimes you get to 70th minute. You know, the coach now decides all these substitutes on the bench. I want to put somebody in to go and play. So, they allow the referee and the referee will blow the whistle. After blowing the whistle, they will raise the board. And you see a number. Number nine is coming out. As number nine is coming out, at the same time, number 11 is entering. As number nine is running out of the pitch, at the same time, number 11 is running inside the pitch. The exchange happens at the same time. So I have good news for you. When Jesus was running into poverty, at the same time, you were running into prosperity. Which school did you go to? On ABC on Abanjo University. Who was your vice chancellor? Um, professor, professor Oshimbanje. Professor Oshimbanje. Oshimbanje. Okay, not Oshimbanje. Oshimbanje. Do you work now? Where do you work? What do I commercial ventures? Who is your boss? Mr. Henry. Mr. Henry. Yes. Okay. Imagine on Tuesday morning after public holiday, you get to work by ten o'clock in the morning. I'm professor. Sibanje comes to give you a query. Why are you coming to work late? Why are you coming by 10? Why are you still trying to answer? He tells you that you're sacked. Are you sacked? No, I'm not. Why not? Because I've graduated already. He has graduated. The day he graduated, he was delivered from the authority of Professor Osibaje. Then the day he got a job, he was translated into the kingdom of Mr. Eh? Mr. Harry. So I have good news for you. The day you got saved, the day you got born again, you were delivered from Satan's authority. You were translated into the kingdom of his dear son. Satan cannot leave his kingdom to come and run your life in the kingdom of his dear son. Can I hear an amen?